Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you briefly how to animate SVG strokes. Now this can be something that's kind of confusing, but if you understand just two different properties, it's quite easy to get something to animate generally as you'd expect it to do. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Let me show you kind of what inspired this. I did a project recently for a little JavaScript challenge where you create this Pomodoro timer and you add whatever time you want, start it, and then it actually animates this little dash around the outside. Now this was part of something called Advent of JS by James Quick and Amy Dutton. Uh, she, he has an advent of JavaScript and she has an advent of CSS. They work together and uh, that's what I did. I did both of them together and uh, they're 24 challenges. And whenever you start them, you just start to get them one after the other each day. And so if you're interested in that, I think it is a helpful way to learn. Today, what I'm gonna show you is two different things. I'm gonna show you, first of all, if I can refresh this page here, uh, a code pin will be in the, the link here, but what we're gonna do is animate the circle like this. And then I'll just show you how to do something like this. We won't take the time to do it because all the principles are the same. And uh, I'll show you that in a moment. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. So if I come back over here, there's two things I wanna show you before we get started. I've just got the circle on there for now. And you can see it's just a basic SVG with a circle tag and it's just got a stroke and the stroke color is set to uh, the SVG, the parent, the current colors color. And what we're gonna do is mess with just those two properties I told you about. One of them is called stroke-array and the other one is called stroke-offset. Now by default, this stroke has whatever length it takes to get around the circle. And what stroke-array says is take that length and then chop it up based on whatever pattern I give you. So if I say like 50 and then comma 24 and then I don't know, 59 uh, and then 100, whatever. Um, if I save it, you'll see it actually gives us this pattern. The first dash, it starts over here, is 50, then 24, then 59, then 100, then the same thing goes around. And if I were to actually remove one of these like this right here, what you'd see is that it actually just continues. So 50, 24, 59, and then this one again is 50, 24. So it's not necessarily the blanks, it's just alternating every single time. And it'll do that until it basically runs out of space and then starts back over. So what we can do is use the stroke dash array along with stroke dash offset to actually pattern what that might look like. So for instance, if I were to come in here and get the total length of whatever this line might be. Now, I don't know what that is right now, but let's say I said 1,000. That's not quite enough, so maybe like 1,200, and that's getting pretty close. Well, how do you figure out the length of the line? Well, it's actually pretty easy to do in JavaScript. So I can come over here, open up the console, and then if I just select this here, just the circle, make sure you're selecting the circle and not the SVG. Um, then I can come back over to my console, hit the dollar sign zero, which gives you the last thing you clicked on, and then dot get total length. That's just the method that lives on that stroke, and it tells me exactly what it is. It's 1256 point whatever, whatever. I would have never guessed that, obviously. So if I put that on, it's going to obviously have the entire first uh, little dash be the full length of the circle. Then what I can do is offset that by whatever amount here. So I could say 500, and it would offset it by 500. If I said uh, 1000, it would offset it almost all the way. And of course, if I said 1256 point whatever, it would do it all the way. You can see there's just a little tiny bit uh, left. I don't know if you can even see that. So we're gonna use these two different properties to update what that looks like. So if it's at zero, if there's no offset at all, then it's just as you would expect. The first dash is exactly starting right where you'd expect it to start right here and going around once, and then it would be blank the next time around, which obviously we can't see. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just do, let's let's put this transition back on. I'm gonna leave all the rest of that alone for the JavaScript we're gonna do in a second. Uh, but I am gonna go ahead and write an animation. We're gonna call this, uh, let's just call it draw. And we'll do it over three seconds, ease and let's do infinite. And then I need to just write that keyframes here for draw. And I'm just gonna say two, so basically at 100%, go ahead and give me a stroke dash offset and I wanna copy in that same number, the 1256, whatever. So if I save that, you see it goes all the way around and stops, all right, and that's what I want. So it goes all the way around and stops, and it's just animating over and over again to 100%. All right, so that's simply how you animate SVG lines with just CSS. Now, I wanna show that if you use CSS variables, you can actually animate them some or update that animation with JavaScript, and that's what I did in that clock example. So let's go ahead and stop this right here. And then I'll remove this animation and then stroke dash offset and stroke dash array. We're gonna set to the variables we have up top here. So let me comment all of these out here. 
I've got a stroke dash length. This actually needs to be set to my 1200, whatever that is. An increment, which tells me basically how many chunks to break this up into and how long they should be. So they should all be four pixels in this kind of beginning start. I'll just start at zero. We're going to update all this with JavaScript anyhow. And then a stroke uh, calc should be set to basically what the offset should be. So I'm going to set this to var of my stroke calc. And then this one, rather than writing it in here manually, will be var stroke length. Just to show you that you can figure those out in JavaScript and update these CSS variables, uh, we're going to go ahead and just write a script tag. Uh, let's just do it right here. And this is where we're going to write all the code. First thing I need to do then is to grab the circle. And that's going to be equal to uh, document.query selector. And I'm just going to select, obviously, the circle tag. And now I've got that circle tag. And then let's go ahead and say we want the stroke length. So just to make sure that we've updated this properly, if you change the size of your circle or something like that, it will actually update the length, obviously, of that stroke. So I just want to make sure that whenever we're running this function we're going to write, that we have the exact stroke length as is present in the DOM. So of course, this will be the same thing we just did in the terminal. So this will be our circle dot get total length. And then we can go ahead and update the style dot set property. And we can set the property of, let's see, what was it? Stroke length. We're going to set that to the variable in JavaScript stroke length. Now it's already set here, but if we were to change it again, uh, it'd be nice just to make sure it updates automatically. Now, I also want a couple of other things. We're going to basically say how long it should take for the circle to kind of complete, to go all the way around. So I'm going to have another constant here, except I'm going to capitalize this to show it's a true constant. Let's just set this to 10, and this will be 10 seconds, basically, is what we're going to set this to. And then uh, let's update the, let's see, what else do we need to update? The increment, because we need to figure out how many parts we should break this into. So the way we would do that is say const, uh, actually, let's just copy all this down, like this. And I'm going to update all three of these by hitting Command Shift D, and then this will be the stroke uh, increment. And here, what I want this to be equal to is the stroke length divided by that time variable. So how many parts it should break out into. These are the increments. So if I save this, just so we can see that something is happening. If I come over here, you see that automatically updated on page load to give me the stroke length and the increment, which is perfect. All right, now there's one other variable we need to declare outside here, and we're going to call it um, total time remaining. We're going to set this equal to time to start with, and it's a let variable because we're going to update it with JavaScript as the time clicks on. Now let's go ahead and write a function here, and this function is going to be called, uh, let's call it draw circle. And whenever this runs, we want to check how much time we have left and then respond based on that. So we'll say if uh, total time remaining is greater than zero. Then we want to say circle.style.set property. And the thing we're going to update is that other variable we haven't touched yet, which is our stroke uh, calc. We need to set this equal to however many increments we should have gone around the circle. So we obviously are going to start with our stroke length. That's the entire circle. And now we want to say, OK, how much should we have left? So we have to say that minus our stroke increment, the segment that we're going to animate each time. And we want to figure out how many we've gone, which would be our total time remaining. So if I've gone two of my 10 ticks, it should be the 10th times two, which will give me two of those minus whatever the full length is of the circle. And then I just want to return, let's pull up here, uh, return uh, my total time remaining minus equals one. So go down one, decrement one. And then I can say else. So in other words, if it's zero, let's copy this down. This time I don't want to set it to anything here. I just want to set it to the stroke length. So in other words, I want it to be at zero. I'm going to offset it exactly the, the length of the, uh, the dash that I have. So I need to actually call that. Let's draw the circle like this. And then now, in addition to everything, I get the stroke calc. Now, right now, it's giving me six or 10, which is my seconds. So right here, it's giving my total length, the 1,200 or whatever, my stroke increment, which right now is equal to one tenth of that, so like 122 something, and then times the 10. All right, so it puts me back up at the same amount, which is why it looks like a full complete circle. So what I need to do is find a way to basically make this run every second. I've ran it first right out the start of the page, but now I need to run it every second, and you can do that with something called set interval. And I'm just going to 
pass it my function draw circle every 1000 milliseconds or every one second. And if I save it, it should actually animate every second like that all the way until it finishes. Now, you might say, okay, well, great, we're done. Not quite. <laughs> it's done, but it's actually still running this interval. If I come up here inside the function we just wrote and I console.log the total time remaining, now let's change this time here to like three seconds so you don't have to wait so long. And I come over here, it's three, two, one, zero, zero, zero. It's just gonna keep going over and over again. So I need to actually clear this interval so that JavaScript can stop doing work in the background. So the way to do this is you have to give it some kind of, you have to reference it with a variable. So I'll say const, let's just call it clock. And then I can clear the interval uh, under here. So, oh, I jumped down, sorry about that. I can just say clear interval and then clock. You'll notice here that my ESLint said, hey, why are you doing an else statement when you returned here? Just put everything else here and it'll never reach that unless it's at zero. So perfect. So I'm gonna clear the interval of clock. Now, technically this is below it, but now you'll see what happens if, if I refresh, it'll go three, two, one, zero, and then nothing will be there. Okay, cool. So that's how you animate stuff with uh, CSS. And then here's how you would interact with it with JavaScript. Now, let me go ahead and comment all of this out and I'm gonna show you the final thing, which we're not gonna do. I'm just gonna walk you through what I did here for this other SVG. All right, I will save here. And now you see it draws in this little arrow. So let me walk you through what this does and you can play around with the code pen afterwards if you wanna learn more. So we've got this basic SVG and instead of writing a separate style tag, I've actually embedded it inside the SVG, which you can do since it's just code. I've labeled each of these paths as either body or head. And then for each of these, what I'm doing is I'm saying, here's the stroke dash ray, here's the stroke dash offset. Now, the way I've set this up is if somebody doesn't prefer motion, I don't want all this stuff animating constantly. You can actually emulate that in Chrome. If you open up your dev tools, hit command shift P and then hit, uh, I think it's render, show rendering, and then come down here and near the bottom, you're gonna see prefers reduced motion and I'm gonna set that to reduce. And now you'll see that this doesn't animate, only this does. Prefers reduced motion doesn't mean no animation, it just means less animation. So you'll see what I've got here is if there's no preference at all, I'm gonna actually add back in the stroke by putting this animation on and doing a stroke dash offset of nothing to start with and then it's gonna animate on slowly. And then if they do have prefers reduced motion, it's just not gonna do anything. If you look up this body, it's gonna already be set to just fully extended. So let's turn this back off and uh, that way you can kind of see the full effect. Then all I'm doing is I'm basically starting each of these. They're three seconds in length. They wait 1.5 seconds each time. And then I'm using these keyframes to say, hey, from zero to 20, basically do nothing on this uh, arrowhead. And then starting at 20, go to 60, and go all the way to where it shows fully, stay there until 90%. And then go beyond that to the negative 14 value. So kind of go all the way past it and pull uh, down just like it's going to do here. I'm doing the same thing on the stem itself. So I'm saying nothing and then I'm actually having it draw on uh, a little bit later, staying there and then at 100% it'll go past it and kind of extend all the way down. Now because I turned on and off that rendering, I need to refresh so it, the timing is actually correct and then they should line up each time like this. If you're interested in this and you don't want to do all the mess here, you can. There's a cool site called svggator.com and uh, you can see that they actually walk you through it all. You can export them and uh, it's really cool. It's easy to work with. There is a paid tier past basically three items and you can't do everything in the free tier, but uh, I've used it before on sites and it's really helpful to play with. So hopefully that's helpful. They'll actually do this kind of animation for you in the SVG. It just makes it really heavy and big. So just be prepared for that. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was a help to you and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.